Good morning, good morning. Dr. Gary here on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide. So today's topic is a dental practice sale closing with confusion, chaos, bedlam, every which way mixed up. Let's get into what happened. Before we do that, as you know, we're in multiple states now. We have 10 employees and we are available to you from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. every single day, except Christmas and Easter. We're at your service, buyer, seller, whatever you need, selling your dental practice, buying a dental practice, you want an appraisal, we're there for you. And if you just need general advice, we always give free advice. Also appraisals, so we're available to you. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. Also, the website is dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebrokers.com. You need us, we're on it, we'll be there for you. Now, everything you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes. It's not legal or business advice. Now, if you're thinking about selling to one of the DSOs, please give us a call because we work with them all the time. It's a landscape that's changing constantly. So we can help you with that. Now, when we work with them, we're independent, but they'll pay our commission majority of times, you know, depending on some criteria. And when you work with me and my team, we have 10 employees, two CPA accounts. We're there for you. Uh, we will uh, often have your legal fees, based on criteria, of course, but your legal fees will be reimbursed upon successful closing. So give us a call. We can go over everything with you. Anyway, um, this is, and I'm doing this 13 years, dental practice broker every single day, 363 days a year, and... Uh, some of our closings are so challenging. And this one I'm going through right now, nightmare, chaos, up and down, sideways, bedlam, confusion. It's just a freaking nightmare. Where I would say we're through, but we're not officially through. You're not officially through a closing until the wire transfer hits your account. That's it as a seller. When that wire transfer hits, you're finished. They can't tell you, okay, the deal's closed and signed and everything, documents is signed. But until that wire actually hits your account, you're not officially closed. Essentially, draw no comfort. Never get comfortable on any closing that's coming up. Forget about choosing a date. These guys that say, oh, I want to close on the first of the month, make it easier. That, that's wasted time, ridiculous, never happens anyway. And all you do for the rent is you prorate it, that's all. It's one figure prorated, up, down, whatever. Um, so forget about the timing. I mean, this thing is delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. It should have closed about a month and a half ago, which is our original target date to close a month and a half. But it's a little, you know, a little tight. It would have been a month after the letter of intent. The buyer liked the office uh, the minute the buyer came in. Guy, gal, whatever it is, him, her, liked it immediately. But um, this has been a roller coaster. I mean, I am like wiped out. The attorneys are wiped out. The banks are wiped out. Buyer wiped out. Seller wiped out. It's like, forget it. Why this happened? It's a, you know, it's just a combination. One of the attorneys was a dental attorney, fortunately for the seller. The other attorney was not a dental attorney. Knew what they were doing, but not a dental attorney. So that means they're a player. That means it's the first time this dental attorney is working with this other attorney representing the buyer, first time. Okay, so they have no history together. You got a buy, uh, buyer's attorney, no history with the bank. You know, when you got a history with the bank, you got a great dental bank. It was a great dental bank, but, uh, you know, there were documents lost, documents sent, documents lost. I'll, I won't blame anybody, but that's part of the problem. 
documents were sent and resent, you know, like uh, wire transfer information, uh, closing statement, send, resend. Bank never got it. Bank did get it. I saw the information going to the bank. Did it go from the buyer or seller's attorney to the bank and got lost on the way? Did it go into some firewall spam at the bank? I don't know. Bank keeps saying they never had it. I see three, four, five transmissions to them. I mean, what's going on? That's delaying things. They're blaming us for everything. Then you got a buyer's attorney. He's a good guy, but didn't know dental and a little lax. So you had the seller's attorney had to step up to the, you know, step up to the plate. Then you got a timing problem. Uh, I generally, you know, the the buyer had to leave a uh, continuing education seminar that they paid for, and they were going to be gone for like a week and a half at the continuing education seminar, and it was out of the country. You know, they do, I think it was implants or something, they set up patients. So, you know, it was important. They were there, and they paid for it. But that, unfortunately, because the, we wanted to get this thing done a month and a half ago, we never dreamed that the Buyer's Continuing Education uh, seminar was set up out of the country. I, I didn't realize it. I mean, I should have asked, but I didn't think it would take that long to close, but it did. I was a freaking nightmare. I mean, it's so draining. So you have the pressure of that. Buyer now says, well, maybe I should close a week and a half, 10 days later than our original plan. We're coming down the home stretch. The home stretch is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We thought we could maybe do it Friday. And uh, then the buyer's getting nervous. But we told the buyer, don't worry about it. The staff will stay on. It's an absentee practice you're buying. It's handled. You can do everything remotely. You don't have to be there. The staff is there. The associate doctor's there. So it's an easy transition. Buyer keeps telling us, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. But then the buyer is giving the bank big signals. Well, I don't know if I'm ready. I'm going on this seminar, and it could be difficult, and uh, I'm not sure. Then the buyer says, oh, I'm okay. Let's just do it on Friday. Let's get it done. I don't leave for the seminar until Monday. That will give me a few days to get prepped, get the associate ready. Then the buyer is telling us one thing. I get a message from the buyer. I'm good to go on Friday. No problem. Then the buyer is calling the bank, saying, well, I don't have to close on Friday. I can certainly wait. I'm kind of open. It's not pushing. Then another thing happened. The, we generally don't, I do not like introducing sell buyer to the staff before closing because a closing may or may not occur. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care. Anybody can walk away, can shut the deal down. Maybe if contracts are signed, I'm a little more comfortable with meeting the staff before the closing. I prefer to meet the staff after the closing because it's signed, sealed, delivered, finished. Before that, anything goes. You don't want to start bringing in a buyer to meet the staff, and I don't like that anyway because the buyer could have a misinterpretation of, especially if it's male going to female, female going to male, uh, in staff, and nowadays the staff can pick up a job anywhere. So I do not like introducing the staff to the buyer closing. That's another problem. So now, buyers insisted wants to meet the staff. This is three days before the supposed closing. And uh, some of the staff members weren't crazy about the buyer. But, I mean, that's not fair to the buyer. They only just met them as a female seller. I understand. To run absentee. I understand. Uh, but maybe the buyer did something that, you know, kind of turned off the staff a little bit, or it said something. I don't know. Then we found out the buyer is calling the staff, and you know, uh, after he meets them, got their cell phone numbers. That's not a good idea. You don't want all that interaction before closing. So now, we're coming down the home stretch. We're supposed to go to closing, and uh, banks say, we don't have the documents. We said the documents were sent any already. Bank says, we need more time. We can't close on Friday. Uh, we'll close when the seller comes back, when the buyer comes back on vacation, maybe. And in the meantime, that morning of a supposed possible closing on Friday, the buyer writes a note to everybody and says, uh, there's a lot of confusion out there. Why don't we just all relax and settle down and we'll close when I come back from the seminar. We're like, what? No. 
and the buyer writes a note to everybody the seller looks not, it's not the end of the world if the seller has to wait he writes his note to everybody at nine o'clock in the morning or ten o'clock whatever and i'm like what are you talking about the seller wants this done friday latest monday but friday was the designated day and the seller had you know owned a couple practices had a lot of stuff going on with staffing and traveling and had to get this thing done wanted to get this thing for some reason when the buyer met the seller and the seller staff uh maybe the seller didn't get the message across as well as they could were not as forceful but the seller was very clear all along this has to be closed on friday I do not want this delayed. All right. So the buyer took some part of the conversation that the seller was communicating by, and you know, extrapolated out and said, "Well, the seller's okay with it and writes this note." This is why you got to have a broker that's on top of everything constantly. So I see this note, and I had been talking to the seller the night before. I'm like, "What are you freaking talking about? Seller is not okay." closing when you come back from seminar. No way. I wrote a note to everybody involved, all the attorneys, all the bankers. I said, look, this message that came out this morning is not the reflection. Remember, a broker could be in the middle of everything. So this note that came out on Friday morning is not the true intentions of the seller. By no means does the seller want to close after the buyer comes back uh, from seminar. No, doesn't want to do it. No circumstances. The seller has everything set up, everything's planned, staffing planned, everything planned. Absolutely, without question, does not want to close when the buyer comes back from seminar. Buyer has simply taken a part of the conversation with the seller, interpreted it as though, well, the seller's okay with this. No, the seller's not okay. So this is why hours matter, hours not days, hours matter in some of these deals. I got out within 20 minutes of that email going out. I'm like, frick this, no way. And I got blasted the email out to all the attorneys, all the bankers, all buyer, seller, misinterpretation of communication. This is not true. This is not what's going on. Seller wants this deal closed ASAP. So I got that out. And then... Um, now you have the buyer start to relax, maybe get a little nervous, and they're leaving for the seminar. So they say, just do everything when I get back. No, there's too many things set up. Plus, the attorneys are busy with everything. There's contracts going back and forth, emails going back and forth, trying to get this thing done. So we said, no, forget it. It's not going to happen. Then what happens is the seller is naturally irate and says, what are you freaking talking about? I want this closed. Seller gets on the phone with the attorney, says, get this closed. Gets on top to the bank, says, you got to get this closed. And me as the broker, because I sent a lot of deals to the bank, I'm saying, look, I don't want to this sit. I lost like three, four days on this deal. Just the timing, the emails, you had to be, I had to be on the internet. I had so many things going on myself. So many things. So buyer and seller, um, you know, this, this buyer is just mixing up the communication and the buyer's attorney wasn't a real go-getter. So, no way. We started saying, you have to close. So now the seller's telling the buyer, you don't close. You're in breach of contract because you already signed some of the documents. You're in breach. That's it. I'm taking you to court if this doesn't close. Well, now all of a sudden the buyer's like, what the frick? The buyer understood how serious the seller was. The bank understood. Everybody understood. And rightfully so, the seller was within her rights. Whether legally she could have, could have not have done that, he or she could have, could have not done that. I don't know about that. I'm not an attorney. But it was the fact that the seller was adamant about closing. So I'm on the phone. The seller's on the phone. Bankers are on the phone. Attorneys are on the phone. Is this thing going to close or it's not going to close? It's been up, down, back and forth. It's been chaos. And just a side note, you Dennis to think you've done a couple of deals and you know how to do your own, handle your own buying and selling. You can create your own contracts. You have no freaking clue. Now I'm doing this for 13 years, seven days a week, 363 days a year. 
And I'm dealing with this chaos often. It happens on many deals. It's not me, but it's the structure of the deal. Stuff happens. So, I mean, if you think you can handle this, and I'm accustomed to chaos, and I have I have to make the time available to handle all this, the emails, and like basically shut everything else down. And you're still practicing dentistry, and you got this is a huge problem. A huge problem we have here. And if you think you can do it yourself with no experience, not dealing with the attorneys before, it's like, forget it. You're going to drive yourself crazy. And now the deal could fall apart. You've got to keep everybody happy, keep the attorneys going, keep the bankers going. Bankers know I have some influence because they send them deals. So I have some level of influence. But it's like, this, you, you want to do this yourself? And you think you got it all figured out after you've done five or six closings? Yeah, tell me about it. Forget it. Not happening. So this is what's going on. This was a, a huge problem. This was an issue that had to be handled. And it was something that you cannot just sit back on. you got to be on this 24-7. I mean on this. With no question about it. And that's what I did. So where are we now? So finally on Friday, all the paperwork was going back and forth. All the final contracts were sent. All the final documents were approved. Everything was done. The wiring, although the wire information was sent out a while ago, the bank's claiming they never had it. That's another major issue. This is a major player bank. Major player. And somehow, I'm not going to blame the bank, I'm not going to blame anybody. But somehow... All these documents they were supposed to have received, and I saw the transmission, they didn't get. How that happened, I don't know, but it happened. So, man, it was crazy. So Friday, everything was um, signed, and supposedly the banker says, I have everything I need. But we haven't officially closed, so to speak, because the wires, you know, the, the funding hasn't been done. And the buyer is going to owe a little shortfall with the bank was financing. They usually do 100%, but there was some shortfall. So the buyer has to send that to the seller. Normally that goes into the attorney's trust account. So we have it ahead of time, right? You don't want to wait and ask the buyer to do it last minute. Uh, because now the buyer is on good faith, has to send that to the seller, wire the money. That money should have been in the attorney's trust account before the closing. So when the closing occurs, the attorney can wire the money to the seller. Uh, every situation is different. This situation, the bank wires money. Other situation, it goes into the attorney's trust account. The attorney trust sends all the money out. All right? And we had to coordinate the lease. The lease had to be signed. You have to have the lease assignment signed ahead of time by the landlord. And that sort of sits in escrow and gets activated upon closing. Luckily, we had an easygoing landlord. Luckily, we worked on it. And is it over? No, it's not over because the wires haven't hit yet. Buyer leaves a seminar on Monday or something like that. The abstracts will run absentee, but the wires have not hit yet. Not in anybody's account. So it hasn't officially closed. So it's not easy. I don't know where this is going. I do not relax. Even though everything's been signed, it's technically, I guess you call it closed. It's, it's not, yeah, there's no wires that went out. So I can't just sit back and say, no problem. No, you can't do that. And you can never draw comfort. You have to be on your game basically every day, monitoring, watching, checking. And I'm just not relaxing on this deal until, um, until it's finally, finally over. Hopefully it'll be done next week. We'll see when the wires go out. Not easy. All right, we got a beautiful day at the Jersey Shore. I just found this new bakery diner. They make everything fresh. I'm excited. Take a little break here, eat some food, <laughs> then go shopping, then go to the beach. Oh, yesterday was tough. I hope you guys don't ever have to go through that. And I'm used to it. 13 years, I'm used to this chaos, and I was not. It was a new one on me. All right? So uh, make sure you subscribe and keep us posted. We'll get everything going for you. Okay? Uh, the new practices coming out, we got a bunch of them. Sign up with our email blast. You'll get that, and we'll, we're here to help you. But we're on this 24-7. This is when you need a broker that's going to do this. Hopefully, you find a broker that does that. We're here for you. So call us. Thank you, Dr. Gary, on the road.